My guest today is Alex Batoni. How are you, Alex? Oh, I'm great. How are you? Doing really well. It's a full sunny day here in Chicago. First one in a while. <laughs> I think I'm going to go bike riding after this talk. Oh, wonderful. What do you do? Uh, so I am the co-founder and head of engineering at Cycle.io. Cycle.io. I had never heard of Cycle.io until a few days ago. My Our mutual friend Mike introduced us. But... Um, I've been reading a little bit about it, but you tell me, what is it? Yeah, so Cycle is a new approach to DevOps. It is a, uh, it's a full DevOps solution uh, where we both do managed infrastructure and container orchestration, but our container orchestrator is actually built from scratch. It's not on top of Kubernetes, it's not on top of Docker. It's uh, from the ground up solution, all in one to manage everything related to DevOps that a company, organization, team, whatever would, would need. Tell me a little about that. What's what are the things that are involved in managing containers? Yeah, uh, so containers, as I'm sure a lot of people who are watching this would know, are a way. Oh, to I think a lot stuff. of people don't know though as well. Though it's okay. Uh, <laughs> I we, you get a little bit stuck in the industry and assume that everybody has the same knowledge on things. So try not to do that. Totally understand. <laughs> uh, so yeah, a container is a package of software, sort of like the uh, physical analogy of a shipping container. Right. So before shipping containers, basically everything needed to be customized. You needed to come up with a custom solution for moving your products from point A to point B, uh, sometimes via like customized crates or, or other things like that. Whereas shipping containers came along into the industry and standardized it by making it a specific size uh, and dimension so that you can pack whatever you want into those shipping containers. And then the infrastructure is all standardized to move those containers around, right? Yeah. And so this is the software equivalent of, let's say you're writing in Java or you're writing in Go, or you're writing in all these different languages, you have different requirements, different uh, dependencies that those applications rely on, uh, you basically stuff them into this software container, which is really just a, a bunch of Linux technologies uh, around the kernel, stuff them into this uh, container, and then the tools to operate on containers are all standardized. It's a standardized format. So anything that knows how to start a container doesn't really care what's inside of that container. It knows how to run the stuff inside. And so uh, our platform utilizes container technology in order to make it so that you can do whatever you want. You can build whatever software you want. And our platform is the equivalent of the ships, the cranes, and everything else needed to move it to where it needs to go and manage and run it for you. Okay. Uh, so you now you talk about, uh, use the phrase orchestration. What is the orchestration involved? The orchestration is determining where and how many and how to start all of those containers. So I'll, oftentimes you'll have services where a single monolith is not going to cut the type of scale that you need to operate and run that program. So an orchestrator determines, okay, what hardware is the best fit for this how do I move it to that hardware and how do I make sure that traffic and everything else is able to get into those containers, AKA, you know, including like scaling up the software and other things as, you know, as necessary. All right. Now there are tools already exist to do this. You know, Kubernetes is kind of the, uh, it's almost like Kleenex is to tissue paper. Kubernetes is to <laughs> orchestrating containers and there are tools built on top of that, like Helm and so on. Um, what what is it your tool does that uh, those do not do? So Kubernetes is a, a container orchestration tool, and let, let me let me rephrase that. Container orchestr Kubernetes is akin to the engine of a car. You okay. still need a lot of pieces in order to make a functioning vehicle in order to run and. With that, you have more decisions you need to make. You have other tools you need to integrate with. You have a lot of work that needs to go into making a Kubernetes deployment uh, production ready, essentially. Yeah. Um, sure, you can start Kubernetes and maybe get a container running in, a, in an hour or two. But when it comes to actually continuing the process of running those, maintaining, upgrading, all of the other things, there's a lot of tools necessary in order to make that work. Um, and Cycle comes at it with a very different approach. We had kind of two goals in mind. One, we wanted to make it so that anybody could build anything and not need to have the underlying fundamental knowledge of every little detail 
in order to make that work. With DevOps, there's uh, miles deep on pretty much any surface that you can go across, right? You, you <laughs> Networking, there's storage, there's all of these different pieces that fit into this that can get very, very complicated. Uh, and so we wanted to make it so any developer without having you know extensive knowledge of every piece of the platform would be able to come in and get things online and have things work as they would expect. Uh, and then the second part being all of those pieces are going to work together very well so that you know, it, it's all basically integrated with itself. So we took a vertical integration approach where we built our container orchestration platform from the ground up in order to facilitate uh, connectivity and networking and everything else that our platform handles uh, in one unified way. So we know it works because it works the way that it's built to work with every other piece. You're not trying to, you know, force things together to make them function. So, uh, so we missed a couple things here. One is that you're abstracting away the details because Kubernetes isn't really in, uh, intuitive, at least not to me. I think I started right. off by saying not everybody understands containers, um, and not everybody understands. Even fewer people understand Kubernetes how that works. So you're, you're making it easier. <laughs> you're lowering the barrier to entry on that, which is a good thing. Right, um, and in addition to that, not really taking away the power that you would expect if you were right. to do something yourself. Uh, so basically the full DevOps platform uh, where you have all of the capabilities, but it's presented and managed in a way that's a lot more intuitive. Yeah. I see. And um, it, does it matter what kind of application I'm deploying here or is uh, Cycle.io specifically designed for a specific type of application? No, and that's the beauty of containers is they are a standardized workload. You can put whatever you want into them and our platform is gonna be able to run it just as if you'd built it with Docker and ran it with Docker. If you had built it with Kubernetes and run it with Kubernetes, our platform is what we what's called OCI compliant. OCI is the open container initiative, which sets the standards for images, container workloads and how these things are supposed to function. Yeah, we didn't even mention Docker before, which is a little low, level below. <laughs> Yeah, Kubernetes and uh, uh, and you're extracting that away as well. I mean, there's we we don't use Docker whatsoever in our platform, but you can use that as a tool to build images and other things like that. Yeah, uh, got it. Uh, I guess you're abstracting away the idea of declaratively yes. uh, describing a, a container and then having your tool run that without having to know the deep inner workings of how that's done. Uh, in a way. So we are focused on the production side of these workloads, right? Uh, so when you're doing development with containers, oftentimes you'll have Docker running on your machine. You'll utilize that to start and run containers locally as you're developing them. Uh, and then cycles more on the, okay, I've got my container. I have everything that I need. I'm going to go and run that and start that now. And cycle will manage everything from, I have my container to scaling that across multiple clouds and networking and managing everything all together. All right, and you mentioned uh, uh, that you have tools that integrate together. What are some of those tools that, yeah. So another big piece of the platform is the infrastructure management. And a lot of times, uh, you know, you'll go to a cloud, you'll go to Azure, you'll go to AWS, you'll go to Google, et cetera, and you'll need to deploy some infrastructure. Uh, the part that gets complicated is you'll either use a, a pre built service like Amazon has EKS, the Elastic Kubernetes service. Um, Google has their own thing for Kubernetes. Uh, and, and oftentimes you'll need to set those up and you'll need to maintain them. You'll need to make Got sure it. that your servers are updated. You'll need to make sure to, that- I have, have to the... mention Azure Kubernetes service. Oh, of course, yes, a of course, <laughs> EKS, yeah. <laughs> um, you'll, you'll have to make sure that your servers are updated. You have the latest kernels. You have to make sure that your Kubernetes versions stay up to date. And, I, interestingly enough, we, we quote this quite often. There was a study about a year and a half, two years ago by Datadog that shows that the average Kubernetes installation is about 18 months out of date. So we found that a lot of the times uh, there's, there's security issues and there's other issues with maintaining this stuff because if you go and upgrade, there's a good chance that something in the latest version of whatever is going to break and cause downtime for you. And so what we've what we've decided to do with our platform is you own the infrastructure, so you'll deploy your stuff to Google Cloud or Azure or AWS or whatever, and uh, Cycle will take your API key for that provider or providers and manage that infrastructure for you. We will deploy our operating system onto it. We will keep it up to date. We'll make sure all the versions of our software, the kernel, et cetera, everything's up to date and functioning correctly. And we've been doing this for, I want to say, eight years now. Um, or I'm sorry, the infrastructure portion we've been doing for about five years, since like 2017, 2018. Um, and so we take an entire chunk of, of 
of management and maintenance off of the uh, customer's shoulders where this infrastructure is is always going to work. It's always going to be working with our platform and our technologies. And they get the benefit of actually still owning and and, and having that at their at their fingertips. Uh, walk me through the the developer and deployment experience. What's what do I have to do if I've got an application that I build? Uh, let's say I don't know a web application that calls a web servers that stores things in a database. You know your typical right. uh, application I've read. How how do I use your tool to deploy that? So a lot of times at this point, <laughs> I like to give a demo, but I can I can kind of describe the process of, sure. of what we end up doing. Um, so one of the one of the unique things that we've done is we poured a lot of effort into our user interface, which we're actually about to release uh, a kind of a revamped version of our, our portal uh, here in, in the next month or so. And we put a lot of effort into that. Um, so you've got your containers. Now it's time to upload into Cycle. And there's several ways to do that. You have uh, We have the concept of images, just like you'd have with uh, Docker and Kubernetes, where you can kind of do these direct uploads. We can pull from Docker registries, et cetera. Um, and we also have the concept of a, of a stack file. And a stack file is the equivalent to like a Helm chart or a Docker Compose file, uh, basically orchestrating everything across the platform, where we can pull that in from your repo, build your images for you to kind of take care of the whole, whole process from there. Um, so you'll log into our interface uh, if you want to use the UI. Uh, we're release, we have full support for our API as well, and uh, we're going to be releasing a CLI here in the next couple months, uh, actually my active project right now. Um, and so you, you, you can go into the interface or use the API, et cetera, and you basically create what's called an environment. And an environment is a, it's a network group, essentially. It's an abstracted network group, regardless of where the container instances are deployed to, uh, what cloud, what cluster, whatever. Uh, any container within that network has a private encrypted network built between it, and they can all access each other via hostname. And the way that we facilitate this is part of the, the magic of the platform. We provide a load balancer service. We provide a discovery service for DNS management. Uh, we provide VPN services built into the platform. And every environment gets one of these deployed and managed for them automatically. Um, so you deploy your environment and now all you need to do is start the containers that you want in that environment and cycle will figure out what infrastructure you have on your account that is applicable for this. If you want, you can either say, okay, go to whatever infrastructure, or you can be a little bit more specific, like you have GPU workloads or something else. Um, and then you just have a nice big start button. You hit start and everything comes online. All of your stuff is accessible via network. You have your DNS connected pretty much instantaneously and boom, everything's online and you don't have to think about it anymore because now the platform's main, maintaining that. Of course, if you have updates to your software, et cetera, there are you know, pretty easy ways to, to update those container images underneath. But at this point, you have production software that's gonna be running you know, pretty much no matter what. Yeah, great. That, I mean, that sounds dirt simple when you initial deployment, but you mentioned uh, software updates. If I wanted to implement a continuous integration, continuous deployment solution, does Cycle.io ha handle that or do you plug in, do you integrate then with another application like lifecycle management tool? So Cycle handles the CD portion of CI CD. So there's there's tons of CI tools out there that are very good at what they do, very good at the testing portion. And you know, like GitHub Actions, for example, is, is just a fantastic tool. Uh, where we take over is the CD portion, the, the continuous deployment. So once you're testing and everything is green and you're you're ready to basically do the production software at that point, uh, Cycle has what's called pipelines. Uh, so this is one way to do it. Uh, we have pipelines where you can say, okay, hit this webhook with this key. And when that happens, Cycle will orchestrate an entire list of things that can be done with it. Pretty much, you know, most of the things you would be able to do via the UI or via, uh, you know, the API. Uh, and so from there, we'll pull in the new images, we'll re-image any containers that need it, and, you know, make sure that all of that stuff is, is working correctly for you. Very cool. Uh, this is a commercial product, correct? That's correct, yes. Tell me about the, the, the pricing. What, what factors go into how much you pay? Yeah, uh, so we have kind of three different tiers uh, that we work off of, plus like an enterprise custom thing. We're very we're very flexible on a lot of the stuff, uh, but the the main metrics for us are the number of servers that are managed by the platform. Uh, so our free tier comes with you know one server that you can deploy into the platform, and then you know basically the standard features and one user. So servers and users are kind of our two. That's kind of nice for just testing it out, making sure it works. Exactly, right. exactly. Um, so. Uh, as you scale up, you know, you're going to want to add more servers, obviously, for high availability and other things. So there's a, a, 
a light plan, which right now I think is, is starting at like $300 a month. Uh, and then a business plan, which goes to 10 servers, 10 user, 10 plus servers, 10 plus users. And once you are in the paid tiers, you can add more servers for a small cost. So there's a way to, you know, kind of get in between the lines there and be a little bit more flexible. Um, and then if you're at the enterprise level and you've got obviously a lot of custom stuff, Cycle does work with on-prem infrastructure, which is something new that we've released in the last few months. Uh, we have an infrastructure abstraction layer, uh, which is this cool piece of technology where you can basically uh, prop up an endpoint with, I wanna say 10 different API calls to it. Cycle will interface with that as if it was a, a cloud like AWS or, or Azure or, or Google. And you can basically say, okay, I've got this on-prem infrastructure. I got stuff in my closet. I've got stuff over here. And you can set that up to say, okay, here's Cycle. Here's where this server is. Here's where the IPs are. You know, here's an IP that we provisioned for this. Uh, go nuts. And so now you can pull in uh, cloud resources with on-prem or colo resources kind of into the same thing. And uh, for infrastructure, uh, for enterprise customers, uh, we can deploy an entire Cycle core onto their stuff so that they basically are running their own version of Cycle, the platform, in addition to their own infrastructure attached to it, uh, just to kind of provide a little bit more peace of mind, a little bit more uh, white glove yeah. uh, service there. Okay. And, and you are one of the founders of this company, right? Yeah. How long is this? When did this happen? When did you find it? When did you find it? <laughs> <laughs> so we, st uh, my my co-founder uh, Jake Warner and I started the company back in Toledo, Ohio, in twenty. That's a great town. Yeah, <laughs> born and raised. Uh, well, I was born in Columbus. Sorry, I was raised in Toledo. Um, <laughs> I was raised. I was raised in Detroit. I know Toledo well. Oh yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Basically, uh, we're a suburb of Detroit. So <laughs> right, right, right there. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so uh, we started uh, back in twenty fifteen. We were at the time a dev shop, and so we were building. Uh, products for other companies in the in the Northwest Ohio area and, and a couple other places. And what we noticed was we continuously had to come up with custom deployment stuff for our customers. Everybody had something different. Everybody had different software, different stuff that they needed to do. Sure. And it was about that time that Docker started gaining popularity. And I remember we were watching, I think one of the Docker cons of like Docker con 2015 or something. And we we're like, this technology is really cool. I think this, if we could build a platform uh, you know, using this technology, it's like, we think we can actually make it so we never have to worry about deployments again. And yeah. so kind of in the same time, Kubernetes was just getting released. Docker was just starting to hit its stride. We said, you know what? We can do that. We can build our own container orchestration tool. And so that's what we did. And what we noticed was, wow, this is a really powerful platform. What if we added this thing in here so that we didn't have to think about infrastructure anymore? What if we added DNS capability? And, you know, over time we were building up this platform and realized this is a really powerful tool. And we've we've created something kind of magical here in the DevOps space. And so we just took that idea and started running and sprinting with it. And we've been around since then. Uh, and, you know, in what what the, we were facing early on was most people did not know what a container was. Most people were not using containers. And so half of our battle was explaining why they should switch to this completely new underlying technology. And, and yeah. you know, it was a little bit of a, uh, a challenge for us. Uh, but over time, as containers got more popular, uh, once we started uh, deploying infrastructure on behalf of our customers instead of doing it within our platform itself, uh, we started to hit a stride. And in the last year and a half, uh, people have kind of gone through the Kubernetes hype. They've gone through trying to deploy and manage this stuff themselves. And they've realized, wow, this has cost us a lot of money. It's not as you know, good as we thought it was going to be. Uh, obviously, for some people, it's great. But for a lot of companies out there, it is a lot more management burden than it's worth. And they've started looking for alternatives. And in the last year and a half, our company's actually 10 x just because people are starting to find other yeah, solutions. Congratulations. Companies. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so it's been an exciting time and we are really starting to feel the snowball of adoption uh, over the last year. And it's it's been really exciting. Uh, so you uh, you originally started out building this tool to help yourselves yep. doing deployment as a custom dev shop. And now it's become so successful. You thought first we'll share it with other people. And now I think that's the core of your business now is marketing. Yeah, I think, we, I think at one point we just Pause, we just stopped all dev dev shop efforts probably like mid 2016 towards the end of 2016 and we're just like you know what let's <laughs> let's just focus 100 on building this platform good deal where does the name cycle io come from so it, it's actually that's a great question uh so the the platform itself i think it's on a 15 minute loop where it basically goes through and validates everything about its internal state and ensures that 
you know, customer deployments, their infrastructure, their containers, everything else is matching what our internal state needs to be. So it's kind of is on the cycle of validation to ensure that things haven't, because networking and everything else can get really messy and, and things break, you know, networks become disconnected, things can disappear. Uh, and so the platform has kind of an internal self-cleaning cycle where it makes sure that, you know, everything is where it's supposed to be and things are working the way that they're supposed to be. Basically checks itself regularly. And where can people go to learn more about this? Yeah, uh, so a couple of ways. Uh, we have uh, our main website, cycle.io, uh, which, you know, it's fun input, output, and <laughs> domain TLD on there. Um, so people can go to cycle.io and, you know, check out the platform and everything else. Um, we have a uh, Slack, a public facing Slack where people can interact with us directly. Uh, they can sign up at slack.cycle.io and join our, uh, join our conversation there. And uh, I, I would say that those are probably the two best ways to reach out to us. I'll put those in the show notes then. Um, is there anything we haven't talked about that we should? Ah, uh, that's a great question. Um, I mean, there, of course, I could dive into a uh, hundred different features, a hundred different pieces of technology. But I really think, you know, if somebody's interested in in checking us out, uh, we we'd love to give demos. Uh, we'd love to show you around and show you the the value prop of what our platform's capable of. What's the best way to uh, communicate that you want that? Uh, Signup.cycle.io. Uh, there's a link on our main website, and they can basically just, uh, yeah, put in their information. I see and we'll it. Reach out. I'm looking at it right now, and uh, click on it, and there's a form you fill out with. Uh, yep all your contact information. Exactly. Yep. Awesome. Well, Alex, this is really interesting. I, I'm, I'm glad I learned about this tool, which I was totally ignorant about just two weeks ago. And it's <laughs> interesting talking to you. you. You stay safe. Great. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's really fun sharing this this new bleeding edge technology, you know, everything from containers, orchestration, infrastructure, all these different pieces together with new friends like you, David, and friends that introduce us to these friends like Mike. So big shout out to you and to Mike Feldman for making this introduction. And it's been really great chatting with you.